he cried also in mine ear with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the other he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Now what's most significant here, in Ezekiel chapter 9, is verse 4. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the city. Now, an abomination is what is described in the Hebrew as a disgusting thing. And here's some scriptures that talk about abominations. Firstly, to lay with a man as with a woman is an abomination. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Leviticus 18.22 and then secondly, it says, Idols are abomination. Other gods, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. Deuteronomy 32.16 Now to look at Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 again. We see the word signature, Mark. 84.20 is the Strong's number. And in my paperback, Bible, it says for 8420, Tau, Mark, by implication, a signature. But when you get to the Bible hubs, 8420 says Tau means frowardness, a mark. And then further, down to the section where it talks about the exhaustive concordances, it says, very froward, perverse thing. Now let's read that verse again. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So you put a mark, or you sign, you put this sign, the seal, the signature, on the people who are righteously crying and are sighing and complaining about all the abominations and they're the ones to be saved and then again the bible hub has the signature meaning frowardness which is direct contradiction proverbs 3:32 for the froward is abomination to the lord but his secret is with the righteous. How's the Bible Hub going to say the very signature that you get because you're against the abominations and it just said frowardness is an abomination. How are they going to say that that signature that he put on people against froward abomination means frowardness? See, they're, they're subverted. It didn't used to say that. It says that now. Now that mark looks like this. It is the Tao. It is the signature of God. I know it looks like that because I have one. I was given one in 2007. I felt a press on my forehead, like I got stamped, and then saw molten letters, and those were the letters. Now, that means that I'm going to be saved out. 
they probably got pissed off that they weren't going, they weren't saved out. So they just said, well, screw it. We'll just say it means forwardness and perversity. When the reason you get them is because you're against forwardness and perversity. And it means signature of God. It's completely blasphemous as well as contradictory. Blasphemous contradiction. Now, 8419 in the Strong's Dictionary says perversity or fraud, a perverse thing, forward perverse thing. But that's a completely different word, tapuka, which isn't related to tau. Now, they did this because they are trying to say, oh, we just got confused and put that there. But they, they define the tau itself as froward. So that's not valid. They're just, they did it like that to make an excuse for themselves. Say, oh, it's just a clerical error. Someone looked at both and combined them. But I know that's not true because I looked it up several times in the last year or two, even as probably as recently as six months ago. And they changed it recently and they did it on purpose because there isn't any extra information here. They just changed the uh, meaning of the term and then added the uh, forwardness and perversion at the uh, exactive concordance or exhaustive concordance. Thus saith the Lord, the heavens are my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, who trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is if he, if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut a dog's neck. He that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Also, I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. When they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not, significant thing here especially is where it says I also will choose their delusions and I'm going to show you why here it has uh, verse 4 of 66 Zaya, and it has the Strong's number 8586 for delusions uh, 8586 has the word they translated delusions, talul, and it means caprice, which if you look up caprice, means, caprice means a sudden or usually silly wish to have or do something, or a sudden or silly change of mind or behavior. Not taking things seriously. You can see also it comes from a word that has the Strong's number 5953, and that is allow, allow, and it means to affect thoroughly. Okay, this is important for several reasons. Now, the Bible Hub, for the definition here, for Talalim, also says wantonous caprice. Wantonous caprice. And that it's root is a law and it has the secondary meaning of tyrant vexation concretely a tyrant they delusion and it says that in the in the uh, paperback as well and then when you get to a law it instead says to act severely to act severely. Whereas in the paperback version, it says to affect thoroughly. You might just think, well, that's just coincidence. They have 
somewhat similar meanings to act severely, to affect thoroughly. And that's how they got it over. And I'll tell you, this is a very interesting story. I wrote up a exegesis on this scripture a couple of years ago on Facebook, which they have since erased. And it was describing the meanings and the original definition in my paperback Bible. I don't remember the exact definition of the word that meant caprice. Talu. I don't remember how they defined it originally. But I do remember that the, the root alal said overly negative influence. And I, rem I did an exegesis on this, so I remember it very clearly. It said overly negative influence. And now it says to affect thoroughly. Now before you think of CERN and the uh, Mandela effect, because that's not what it is. I know exactly what it is. It changed first to something else. The word Talu changed to Caprice as it is now. But the word Alal 5953 had changed to what the Bible Hub says now to act severely. And it said that in my paperback book also to act severely. And I knew that it used to say overly negative influence. I couldn't remember what Talul said, which now says Caprice, and also got changed to Caprice then. But I did remember that Alal meant overly negative influence. <coughs> Not to act severely abuse. <coughs> now, Knowing this, I realized something had changed it. And I figured it was through time machines. I figured it was the uh, Nephilim or the vampires or draconians or the satanic warlocks, whoever has the time machines at this point, use the time machine to go back and to change the scripture because of what it meant. And what it meant is the Big Dipper. How it was upside down. And they said it was because the sky was spinning. It was upside down near the horizon. And they said the sky was spinning. And when it was at its apex because it still pointed towards the North Star, and that's what caused it to spin, it appeared upside down overhead. But clearly, it was upside down near the horizon, which they couldn't explain. But they made something up. They made up the idea that it was spinning when it wasn't. It was by the horizon, and it was upside down. And before that, it was right side up, and it would tilt overnight. It wouldn't spin. It would just tilt. But it went upside down, and they said it was spinning to cover it up. They just made something up. They were, they, with caprice, with silliness, and not taking things seriously, they just whimsically, oh, we'll just say it spins around so people won't get scared. They didn't take it seriously. <clears throat> and the root, meaning overly negative influence, and it says, I will choose your delusion. First, it talks about how God owns the, he made the heavens, and when did you make the heavens for me? Where's my place to rest? I made the heavens. And then he says, I will choose your delusion, because you've been delighting in abominations. And they're, 
delusions, they're overly negative influence because now the, now the sky is spinning. And it does appear upside down when it's overhead toward, pointing towards the North Star, like they said it was doing when it wasn't. And what that is, is God choosing their overly negative influence. They think they influence everything, and they, they do influence a lot with their expectation and their sorcery and their mass will. And they think they, and they're light about it. You know, they just make stuff up and then expect it to, you know, oh, well, that's going to cover it up. And then they use mass collusion and mass mind to try and cause things to happen. And they pervert individuals and subvert people with it. And that's what he's talking about. He's talking about how he chose their overly negative influence, their, uh, thorough, thoroughly affecting things when they said the stars were spinning when they weren't. Now he made them spin because he's going to rain fire soon. He's, he's really tired. I mean, read the rest of Isaiah 66. You'll see what's going to happen. <clears throat> and uh, so they sent people back in time to make it sound like he's choosing a tyrant because they want to uh, make it out like his chosen one is a tyrant. Uh, they, they turn it to caprice, which the definition is, the word is talul, and they change it to caprice, vexation, tyrant. And then they change the root from overly negative influence to, to axabiri. And abuse. So it sounds like he meant he chose a tyrant. Now, out of context, in a different context, these words can be seen as similar. These, or not these words, but these definitions can seem similar in other contexts. It's the exact context where it makes a big difference. In other contexts, to act severely, to affect thoroughly, could be seen as the same thing. And that's likely how they pulled it over on whoever they convinced unless they address the printing presses, which I'm not sure yet, but I will find out. But in this context, it is quite different. They're trying to say that our mass will, because the scientists said so, cause the stars to spin, and that we're controlling everything. We don't have to worry about it. We can just live in simulations and have the chips in our head, and we'll be just fine, is what they want everyone to think. But really what's happening is they just – half assedly you know, not taking things serious. Oh, the big dish was upside down. We better just make something up to cover it up. And then he said, well, I'll choose your delusion, your lightness and your, uh, your silly uh, claim. And the fact that you think you affect everything, uh, your no overly negative influence and cause that to spin. Well, I realized they had changed the words for this purpose so that they could cover up what the, the sky spinning and the Big Dipper being upside down meant. And they, they went back in time to, in time machines, and I have evidence of time machines because I've met people who were from the future. They, I, I was in a cell with uh, vampires and werewolves who were also federal agents, MI6, and uh, police, and SWAT, and one of them was uh, he was one of the cellmates and one day he appeared as a nurse like 30 years older i didn't i didn't put it together until right afterwards and i turned around and i i went back in the room because he, he gave me my medication one day and antibiotics because i had some kind of cold or chest infection or something i can't remember and he only came that one time all the rest of the nurses were female and i went into the cell and then i saw him in his, at his current age, and I was like, wait a minute, that's the same guy, because it was the exact same person. And there's other evidence as well. And I, especially what I'm about to tell you, because I realized they'd gone back in time, either to way back and con ha convinced them at a board what the word should mean, or they went back to the printing of the Bible and changed it when they printed the Bible. You know, I, I wrote myself a note I wrote myself a note to change it back 
said, when I'm king, I need to change this back and make sure it says what it's supposed to say instead of what they changed it to. And I contemplate how I might do this with time machines and how I could avoid being foiled and how I could find out exactly when they did it and everything. And I contemplate for a couple hours thinking about it. And then I went back and I went back to my Bible, my paperback Bible, and I looked it up again, and it had changed again. That's when I figured out it was definitely time machines to blue there. That's what I wrote afterwards. Because my paperback version had changed again within two hours. So there was no way that it was just them changing out my Bible and changing the online version. Where it says Talul still said Caprice. The root, though, had changed to what my paperback Bible currently says, to affect thoroughly. Which was even better than overly negative influence, because overly negative influence is just an, it's an odd, it's odd language. Affect thoroughly is, is much more clear. It's easier to state. It makes more sense with English. And it makes perfect sense with what happened, just as much as overly negative influence is just clearer. You know, the, they thoroughly affect everything with their will and their mass collusions and their, you know, and, you know, they made up. But the sky was spinning when the Big Dipper was sitting there upside down near the horizon. They were saying, oh, it spins and it looks upside down over your head pointing at the North Star. And then, you know, they made that up and that's, you know, caprice. It's whimsical. Just come up with something to, you know, explain it away. And then their mass effect, he chose to go ahead, fine, fine, it's spinning, yeah. You know, what, that's not upside down, okay. You know, he's, he's, he's fed up. And uh, anyway, but it changed a second time after I contemplated how I was going to uh, change it back when I become king after I wrote myself a note to do so. But a couple days later, I looked on the Bible Hub, and they changed theirs to the version that they had changed it to before I changed it back. Because it's online, you you can you know after they went they went back in time to say say they went to a thousand A.D. and convinced somebody to change it to the uh, Acts of Beer. And Caprice, and then they came back, and then it had changed. And I, I wrote myself a note. And then when I'm king in the future, I sent I went back or sent someone back to change it after that, it's, or I went to the same meeting and stopped them from it, but somehow got it changed back to to affect thoroughly, but left it with Caprice. The people who went, you know, went back, even though I had changed it back to the original meaning. And they, they, they're like, well, the paper, we changed it, but the paperbacks changed back, so what are we going to do? we got to change it on the Bible Hub. To, they have the same meaning they want to change it to. So they talked to the Bible Hub and got them to change it. And there's other things that show me that the Bible Hub is also subverted. It's not just the, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the vessel here is Brennan, the CIA director. Uh, I think he's the one doing it, or at least the one who did it with the Bible Hub, who put this stuff with the Bible Hub. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, you know, whoever went back in time, it may have been, I think they're under the instruction of vampires. I'm almost certain of that. So, you know, the it's proof here of two things. It is proof that there are time machines, and it's also proof that I will be king in the future. And I, I, when I found this out, I had great jubilance, and I caught it on tape. I talked to, uh, record. I talked to the computer while I was recording it, and I mean, it was, it, it was incredibly, you know, amazing. I should have. I wish I had it on recording. It's one of the most important moments in history. And, uh, but it, it disappeared off my computer. I don't know what happened to it. But, uh, so you know, whether you believe me or not, I know. Okay, and it's not going to change back because if it changed back. Uh, it won't change back. If it does change back, then I won't, oh, you know, in my paperback version, then, okay, something happened and I don't become king. But as long as it says that in my paperback version, 
I know for a fact I'm going to be king because no matter how many times they go back to change it, when I'm king, I'm going to find out where they went to and I'm going to change it back. But as long as it says that in my Bible, I know for a fact that I will be king. Because how else would I have the power to find out when they did it and go back and change it? And how else would I prevent them from going back afterwards unless I had total power? So, and it also proves that the Isaiah 66 4 does indeed describe what's going on with the Big Dipper and the sky spinning now. And the government doesn't care about your souls, they don't care about the truth. They want you to satanically believe that the mass of people control the stars, control God's will, even, can, you know, or that we live in a simulation so they can plug you into a, you know, put a chip in your brain and plug you into a simulation and control you like, basically like the Matrix. They want to convince you that we're already in the Matrix, but we're not. 